Exactly one year ago today, pro-Trump rioters stormed the Capitol in a deadly and direct attack on our democracy. So we're going to get an update now on the congressional inquiry into that day. Let's bring in now a member of the House Select Committee investigating January 6th, Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Congressman, thank you for being back on the program. Always good to have you here. And you wrote an op-ed that the country has to do better and doing better starts with calling out the lies. So given what we heard from President Biden, uh, just a little while ago, some of his strongest, most forceful and direct uh, uh, attacks against former President Trump about his responsibility for January 6th. Uh, was that a step in the right direction? I think so. I mean, it's 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 time. It's time to, you know, I understand the idea of kind of letting bygones be bygones when it comes to presidents. And they have and I think that's frankly a good tradition. Uh, but in this case, when you have people continuing to deny the truth about January 6th, and not just a handful of people, it's a significant part of America denying that, I think it was important for him to forcefully come out. I, you know, I, I've had to come, unfortunately, to the reality that the audience of these kinds of messages is not necessarily whatever, 25% of America that will never believe any different, depending on, regardless of what facts you put in front of them. But it's the 70% of Americans that can vote and put a bulwark out there and prevent anything further from eroding. And I think that's what we have to look at in terms of that. Congressman, your committee uh, surely has uh, conducted so many interviews, read a tremendous amount of testimony, listened to it as well. With what you've been able to gather so far, what concerns you the most about the actions and inactions of then President Donald Trump? Well, let's, let's look at what we know. Uh, we know that for 180 minutes, he basically sat down and watched television. You know, I don't know if he was entertained by it, if he was frozen in indecision. I don't know. I have my suspect, I suspect he was somewhat entertained by it, uh, given what he said to Kevin McCarthy that day about they must care more about the election than you do. But the real linchpin of a question, and this is why a lot of these inquiries we're doing is so important, people will give pieces of this puzzle. What did the president know prior to January 6th? Did January 6th catch him by surprise? I'll be honest, it didn't catch me by surprise. I, I predicted violence on January 1st. Did it catch him by surprise? And if not, why? What did he know? I think those are going to be the key, and the key questions. Now, keep in mind, let's say magically he didn't know anything, which I don't necessarily believe. The fact is, his oath says he has to defend the Constitution and defend the country. He certainly failed to do that as he's watching Article One, the Article One branch of government be attacked by his supporters. Uh, there's a lot we need to know, but we're getting a lot of information as well. And as far as what you need to know, you said you wouldn't have been surprised and he w shouldn't have been surprised by it, but there's another level or layer to that about whether or not he conspired in some way. If he was actively, before January 6th, engaged in any way in the planning of it, or how far are you from getting that answer? Well, look, we're certainly digging. We're certainly doing interviews. I can't go into too much of what we know. I don't want to get ahead of the committee on that. Uh, certainly there is more to know. And that's why it's not just the interviews with people like Mark Meadows and Steve Bannon that matter. A lot of that is, you know, what's out there kind of in the, the circus of, of what's going on. But it's the 300 people we've talked to already, more than 300 people that give us those pieces. So I think if there is any information to uncover, we will uncover it. Uh, but we have these court challenges we're focusing on. We have these interviews. And the American people, regardless, again, of whether we present this committee report when we do and it convinces you know, every American or not, the history books deserve to have a full accounting. You know, My kids deserve to have a full accounting. That's what's important, too. Congressman, what would a smoking gun look like in terms of criminal activity by President Donald Trump? Well, I think, you know, that's a subjective question, and so I don't exactly know. I think it's one of those you'll know when you see, but I think it's pretty clear that if the president had an idea of what was going to happen, uh, if he knew there was going to be violence, um, to me, that's certainly a smoking gun. But let me just say, we've already had plenty of smoking guns that the president of the United States, the former president, knew the election was free and fair. Uh, you know, buying into conspiracy theories, peddling conspiracy theories, telling people, look, you can be on the far left and far right, but you have to have a basic compact and self-governance, which is my vote will count even if you lose every vote or whatever. That's the basic compact. The former president violated that, and that's what matters.
All right, Congressman Kensinger, we uh, have more questions. We're going to stop there because you understand your wife might be in labor as we speak. Uh, we know you're expecting a, a little one, <laughs> any, not even any day, but any moment now. So good luck. Congratulations. Give her our best. And we'll see you down the road, Congressman. Will do. God bless. Thanks. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.